All right, okay, it is uh, 6.04 p.m. on 6.12.23. I'd like to open the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board. Adjustments to the Select Board agenda. Any adjustments? Well, well yeah, one adjust, adjustment is that the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission director is not going to be. Okay, so Christian Meyer who is scheduled to be here at 6.10, is not going to attend today. We will try to reschedule that. And Skip's not coming, right? Right. So what? We, Skip isn't coming? Right. On the email? Yeah, so, so will we still have that conversation okay. or will we... I think we'll we have. should... I, I think we should... We should have the conversation, but we should sort of uh, make sure that we have, have more time with Skip mm -hmm. to make sure that... When we get there, we can talk about that. We, we get there, yeah, right, so. Okay. Um, we have not approved bills and payroll orders. Uh, we will do that immediately following the meeting and have them to the town office tomorrow. We have approved the minutes from the May 22nd meeting. Those are signed and approved. Did you hear and anything from Tegan? And so she was coming. Huh. Mm -hmm. so are we have... also removing the animal? No. Okay. We'll deal with that when we get there. Yep. Is there any... Oh! Did somebody grab the bids? I don't know. Hmm. I will be back. I okay. Know. Okay. Well, we can jump, jump a bit here and um, well, we do our road commissioner's report. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Are you up for that? <laughs> sure. And get you out of here. Look at that. Sure. We never, we never get you out of here. I'm never You're always like hanging around. <laughs> All right, let's so, go, sir. So, uh, update on road crew applicants. I have one. I have hired him. He has pa successfully passed a drug test. Um, planning on starting him Thursday, uh, Wednesday. That's full time. Uh, no, he's he'll be part time for now. Okay. Yeah. Until until Greg decides what he's doing. Okay. It's a little bit in lingo there, but. Mm -hmm. um, Great. This guy's willing to do part time until then. Excellent. Yep. Yep. Um, I think you could use him up to sixty hours, up to thirty hours. It would still be considered part time. Up to thirty. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, yep. If you need to. Okay. Yep. Um, sort of the way I've got it set in mind right now is twenty hours, two days a week. Yeah. Oh. Um, but anyway. it's nice to have that freedom mm -hmm. to be able to. Yeah. Right. Um, Great. And upgrade on the grader. Um, got some really good news. Uh, <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> on the road this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, that's kind of shiny. Yes. That's a bit yes. Very oh, nice. There, down here. Very nice grader. Um, so, right now we're just demoing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some still sort of in negotiating with them, but I've got them down $10,000 oh, since the starting, their starting amount. Um, I wanted to run it by you guys before I really pull the trigger, but I've got a really good feeling about this grader. So, did you tell these guys that it's like a three-year-old grader? I mean, I know you told yeah. me. Yeah, it's a it's a used grader. It's one that was rented out in in the company um, right. for three years, and after three years, they just sell it. And the hours are still low. Hours are very low. Yep. eighteen hundred. That's very low hours for a grader. Yep. Uh, it's in very good shape. Um, there was a couple of things that I really wanted in this grader, which are not available for this particular one. Um, but I. I'm running, that's why I wanted to demo it, so I could actually verify that it's gonna work for us. Mm -hmm. And after what I see today, I think that it really is gonna work. Um, 
because it's a rainy week, I'm not going to be able to use it as much as I wanted to, but I will get some more use out of it mm -hmm. and feel good about that. How long do we have it for a demo? We've got it for this week. This week? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we are saving a lot of money uh, by purchasing a second-hand grader. Yeah. Um, and the oh, we one... The one downfall is that we don't have a warranty. Right. Warranty no, that was actually you know, my next question. Yeah. Sort of a large one. But to buy a warranty, it doesn't, they don't even offer it for this particular one because of the age of it. But even to buy one is astronomical. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you think you can get parts and coverage for it without I a warranty? Do. Yes. There, there's a dealer right in East Montpelier um, that handles that brand. What's the brand? Uh, Komatsu. Okay. And it's Anderson Equipment. Is Anderson. The dealer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not known for their great service track record. Right. But are any of them? I mean, you call John Cat, Caterpillar, call John Deere. Yeah. They're all very mm -hmm. expensive and, okay. and very busy. Um, and parts don't have to come from China. Right. Japan. 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 Okay. Japan, which is a little better, but no. <laughs> um, um, but they have, but this Anderson has like other dealerships, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes, it's, it's not just like a, it's a, it's a large company. It's a very large company. Yeah. You know. um, We've I, had some bad experience with Anderson and yeah. some loaders mm. that we're dealing with right now. Oh, okay. So I just don't have a whole lot of faith. But... Do you want to look at it? Or if you not, feel like you can have a good relationship with them, then I'd say go for it. Well, I mean, there's no guarantee of that with any company. Nope, um, there's not. I mean, I've had bad experiences with Milton Cat. Okay. You know, the next guy will say they've had bad experience with Swiss Milton Cat. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's like three companies that sell graders. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The biggest thing is that it. this one is available now. What's the price? Um, right now, it's set at all in two hundred and fifteen thousand. Oh. That's with the trade, with the implements that I need, we need on it, which is the wing. The wing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, I got them up to the same amount for our trade in, our trade in value. Uh huh. They came with forty three, mm -hmm. and I said no. The other mm -hmm. dealer said 45, so he mm -hmm. came up with that and dropped the asking price from mm -hmm. the. So we are. So the 215 is after the. 15 is out of pocket. That's 215 that's, oh, okay. is what That's the oh, end okay. deal. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Our grader goes away, and we get mm -hmm. this grader, and it's all set up the way we've hmm. we've agreed to, okay. which we don't get the scarifiers. One thing that I wanted, and I really wanted all-wheel drive, but. Komatsu doesn't make it's all wheel drive. They yeah. just don't. It's, it's not an option. But they've designed it so that it's doesn't necessarily need it. No back it's, roading. Oh, it's got back. <laughs> yes, it's going to be. But it's but it's twice the twice the weight oh. as our old drive. Oh goodness! It's double the weight, so it's hmm. a lot bigger machine, heavier duty. Um, going to do the job. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, so I kind of wanted to. Get your final lesson before I pull the trigger on it. Being that it's a used and it's not exactly what you approved before, because you now you approved a new one. What was the cost difference between the one you had originally looked at that kind of disappeared on you and this one? Uh, that one was going to be three eighty nine. So it's a Big saving. Mm -hmm. big saving. Was that three eighty nine with the trade in? No, and that's the final. Was the final, no, it was the final cost. Yeah. yeah. I think that's great. Maybe we can get some ARPA money back. I was thinking maybe. I could. <laughs> oh no. Well, I was that's, thinking that's, that's between you and me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But hmm. yeah, I think I just have a good feeling about this grader. Hmm. I think it's 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 ready to go now. Um, and we can get rid of the one that I'm nervous about. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah. I like it. Um, I'm in favor, personally. So but I'll make a motion yeah. that we, well, uh, 
empower our road commissioner to buy it. I'll second oh. that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good against. We'll make it happen. Yep. Yeah. Um, for 215 with our trade. Mm. Yep. Like I said, I'm still negotiating, but it, if it does anything, it will only go down. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, only thing on the agenda for you was uh, vacation coverage. Uh, yep. So the new guy will be there mm -hmm. for two days. Uh, Greg is back. Uh, full head of steam, seems like. He's able to get around. He was in the grader today. Um, and we also have Dave Pike oh. doing part time. So uh, my position will be covered. I told Rob to talk with Robin today that if something happens, windstorm or something, then she's welcome to call me and I can call them or they, she can call them direct or, and that goes mm -hmm. the same for you guys. Feel free to call my cell phone anytime mm -hmm. and I can make the arrangements to get to my guys or to whatever it needs to be. I probably can't be there myself because I'm mm -hmm. going to be on the other side of the country, <laughs> but uh, I can arrange for for things mm -hmm. to be taken care of. Yeah, great. Fair enough. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a list um, that I'm compiling for the guys to work on while I'm gone. One of those is going to be putting our sand pile up. Mm -hmm. Uh, another one is we got to put some gravel on Keene Farm Road. We did a bunch of ditching there, and mm -hmm. uh, the gravel is very depleted. So we're gonna I'm gonna have them put some gravel on that. As well as today we put the mower on because it's time to mow the roadsides. Mm -hmm. So okay. you put it on the on the loader. The, on the loader. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing that it mm -hmm. uh, runs operates on. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be starting that. Greg's going to start that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, plug away at it as we can. Um, any questions? By the way, I wanted to mention both to you and Brandy, when I write these little subtitle things under your report, that just is a reminder. It doesn't mean that's what your report should include. It's just a reminder to, you know. <laughs> it's an ongoing issue, yeah. typically. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All set. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Have right. um, a good that. vacation. Okay. Yeah, did you know <laughs> that. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> did you want me to stay for the bid opening? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. It wouldn't be terrible if you okay. could. No, I can. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we should just run straight to that. Going kind of out of order here, but. It's the worst thing. Yeah. Oh, well.
So shall we read these out loud? Or? I don't know. To be honest, I think that we should probably read them out loud. Holy Lord. Sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that one would be. This one is quite normal. I'm not sure here. Alright. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So they are. So um, we have two sealed bids for the Valley Lake Road Culvert Replacement Project. The first that we've opened is from Rogos Engineering Services. The proposal can be broken down into two components. Task 1 would not exceed $5,000 according to Section 3.2 of the RFP that we put together. Task 3 to 4, Construction Services, uh, would not exceed $7,000. So we're looking at a total value of about $12,000 based on this bid. Timeline for tasks have been included. They are part of this report. Timeline for tasks 3 to 4 will be modified depending on the bid and the funding. The culvert was funded by a VTRANS FY25. They expect the work to start in the fall of 24 and the fall of 25. Ooh. We have an insurance certificate that is attached. And we have a plan for effort level based on their professional engineers activities, their survey crew, and their construction services. Their total comes to $11,200, which is about the estimate that they generally gave us. Mm -hmm. This one is, doesn't seem to be broken down quite the same, but um, it's from DeWolf Engineering. It includes the existing conditions survey. It includes a wetland delineation. It includes engineering design plans including legend and notes, existing conditions, site plan and profile, culvert details, structural details, erosion control and sediment control, miscellaneous details, and permitting services. Vermont Watershed Management, Corps of Engineers, Wetland General Permit, Stream Alteration Permit. Then they talk about pre-construction and construction services. The whole thing taking uh, from July to November. Also has an insurance certificate and the uh, summary of expenses and subcontract fees here is $29,267.40 and with another $2,200 if a Vermont wetland permit is needed. Is that the way you read that? It is. So I guess we should take our opportunity to look at these a little closer and uh, have Michael review them also. I'd like Michael to review them also. Hmm? I would like Michael to review them yeah. as well. Uh, some of these seem kind of excessive. Yeah. 
different. Um, so, just for an example with the wolf, our design development on its own, which is most the cost of actually this project based on their principles, at $20,000, $20,280. We have a principal engineer, oversight by a senior engineer, a project engineer, a staff engineer, a junior staff engineer, senior technician, and a two-person structural survey crew. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They did come to the site visit. They did. They yeah, already came to the site visit. The, some of the yeah. came to the yeah. site visit. Hmm. Um, I think that. Hmm. Based on the project that we're proposing, it seems somewhat excessive, but um, I'd like you to review that. They don't give us much detail about what those different engineering profiles actually are going to do, mm -hmm. but I would like your okay. like your opinion I on that. Decipher it myself. Um, I mean, I can. They don't break it down for mm -hmm. us, but they do give us uh, some of the principal engineers that that are supposed to work hypothetically on the project. Um, we also have $5,000 in permitting services. Um, it's not broken out in the DeWolf. It, like the DeWolf agenda has that broken out. We don't have that broken out in our other... Not in the... Uh, no. um, so... We already have a wetlands delineation, isn't that true? Um, yeah, that's pretty well established. So we don't need to pay $1,100 for a new wetlands delineation? Shouldn't. That should be all. The okay. state should have, has that all, all that information. Right. So I think some of this is uh, negotiable, I, th I would like to think, to a degree. Um, and we're into almost $3,000 for a topographical survey, which essentially um, is readily available. Mm -hmm. Two-person structural survey, eight hours. So um, I think that we need to get some more clarification about about this. Mm -hmm. But it'd be great if you don't mind taking a look. No, I'll take a look then. Thank you. You know, you're more than welcome to call the two bidders, too, with any questions you have. I will. Mm -hmm. Um, you can have did we get two? Did we get two copies from Rumble? We, we, we have three copies yeah. from. Uh, we we only have one copy There's from Rumble's. So. Yeah. Well, you can take that one. Thank you very much. So you we have three copies of each. Uh, no. No. I don't. We did. Did we just get one copy of Rumble's? Yeah. yeah, I can make another copy of the office tomorrow. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be so copy. bad if you don't mind making a couple copies. Yeah. That's great. Do you have the original copy? Uh, should we have it back? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Can we get that? Okay. Well, I can share Michael's. Why don't you keep that one? Michael wants to get together. We can look at it together. Michael, why don't you keep one? Why don't you keep one? We have one copy left over. Maybe we can make some extra copies. Do we have a potential grant? Yes, this is all paid for. It's right. all paid for. Right. The grant amount was like $45,000. That's was. just yeah. for the design phase. Do we want to get this phase. one to 92 yep. from our copies? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're all well covered. <laughs> Hire them both. <laughs> I don't want to spend money for no reason. <laughs> I'm just kidding too. That's right. We don't need two, two designs. <laughs> uh, and we have a very disparate set of designs that we're mm. looking at right now. So I'd like some more clarification. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Part part of the lower cost for Marbles um, <clears throat> may be due to the fact that he did do some work. Um, we, the town hired him to do surveying for um, the bottom of Valley Lake Road um, and he was one of the first people that pointed out the condition of the culvert so he's pretty mm. familiar with the site already. So as far as surveying and stuff like that they probably have all so, that. Yeah, some yeah, work maybe yeah. already done for him. Yeah. They've done some yeah. already. 
And DeWolf did the other culvert on the other side of Route 14. Of Route 14. Yeah. yeah. Back in the day. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. the Cabot Road big mm -hmm. culvert? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we'll put that on a, another agenda. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it Eventually. said on the RFP, too. I think, maybe. <clears throat> I think on the RFP it mentioned that there would be a decision at the next... At the next, yeah. Really? We have to review, oh, it. We have to okay. review it first right. and then try to approve it. Okay. Right. Um, Michael, is there a chance that you can come back for the next meeting? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Very lovely. And you'll be gone after this week, right? Yes. So if you want to get together mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. yeah. I'm here until Thursday. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the timeline for the, yeah, the Ruggles one was outside of what we had hoped for, but I think we were all probably kind of anticipating that. Is that going to be a something that we need to make a consideration of? I don't think so. What was... So the timeline for the Ruggles one was 2024-2025, and I think this, like the RFQ, we had it wanted it sooner, but like I think we only it's extended to well, yeah, the December. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know all the pain. And, and both, I mean, they're both aware. We could check with um, with Nate Seacard of Ruggles. Um, the grant deadline for the work to be done is uh, December 31st of this year. Okay. For yeah. the uh, design, design, design work. work. Just yeah. design. So we don't work. even have the grant for the actual work yet, right? No. no. So, no. so there's no timeline on that. No. And usually with a project like this, you know, once the design work is done, you're pretty much a shoe in for, we just have to reapply, but it will be with District 6 instead of District 7. Mm -hmm. um, so, but usually one, once you get the grant for the design work, it's kind of a given that you would that would be the funding nice. for the yeah. for the, Otherwise, they're the wasting their money. Right. <laughs> Our money, whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and the guy from the state was at the site visit, and he said that he would oh. you know, put in a good word for us, oh. so to speak, for the grant. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it looks like we were supposed to be opening these on Monday, May 22. Well, that's only for the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Three weeks late. Well. Oh well. Oh well. All right. Um, can we move on? Yeah. All right. Robin's not here for the town clerk's report. Um, we're going to have to postpone uh, the contract with the Washington County Sheriff's Department in our agreement with Central Maine Humane Society, as far as I understand. Mm -hmm. Unless you know. You do different. have the, the copies for signatures that I've given you earlier if you want to review them and sign. Okay. So both of those. Mm -hmm. I think we will review these after the meeting and then sign mm -hmm. if if it's if we agree. We can do that in executive session. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um Miss Brandy, can we go ahead with the town treasurer's report, please? Yep. You have your reports over the last three weeks. Um Cash receipts, we took in $14,944.70. Delinquencies, $1,841.08. Traffic fines of $107.50. Today I transferred $20,000 from the money market over to checking. Payroll was $12,519.10. Uh, accounts payable, $23,011.08. Um, so lately I have been reviewing um, accounts payable, making sure that we have our 12 payments in for the fiscal year. Um, other goodies, other goodies. Um, Is there somewhere in here where 
says, whether we are ahead or behind in general. We like having a surplus like we did one year. What would that be? So we don't put in carryovers. Right. Um, but your last page, which, well, no, not last page. So page eight. We have $22,285.73 that's left to be spent. That's all? Yuppers. It's in the that's general? the general fund. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, highway, we're at negative $5,666.58. We'll be getting one more installment. Oh, well. <laughs> That's not bad. You've got to have a bake sale now. I think. <laughs> um, we'll still be getting another quarter of class two and three. We will still be getting another quarter of Swenson. Um, but yeah, we mm -hmm. there's a few, and I've been reviewing that. We have to really going in next year as far as culverts, as far as gravel, and of course with not knowing what the price is going to be increase. Um, but yeah, those are two key ones that are over budget. Mm -hmm. okay. but. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mr. Payne. All right, so we finished up the Valley Lake Covert design. Mr. Larrabee, you're in the clear if you want to be. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the good news. Thank you for all the good thank news. You. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing's on the agenda is the status of adoption process for, the, for, for our proposed animal control ordinances and our next steps. Without skip here, I feel like we should postpone that conversation. Yeah, there was a there was discussion at the last meeting about running it all by VLCT, but I'm not sure who, if anyone volunteered to do that. I did, you but did. I haven't had anything oh, back yet, okay, and so as long as it's not me. So it's <laughs> not you. <laughs> so I'd like to po postpone that discussion, especially without Skip okay. here and having not heard back from VLCT. Okay. Um, we have on the agenda an application for our animal control officer. Um, well, you know, it was not really an application. It wasn't. But it, was it was spoken for. It was a uh, spoken volunteer. It was a yeah, it was a volunteered position. Mm -hmm. um, Marcella is not here, so we don't really have, I, and as far as I know, have they gotten the description of the position? I talked to him briefly last week in a parking lot, not briefly, it's never briefly, but Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but he was still really interested, and I told him about the Big Book of Wolf. I don't know if he has a computer that he can look at that with, or but uh, he was going to meet up with Kim and talk about the job requirements, and he hadn't done that as of last Friday or Thursday. Um, Kim's kind of hard to get a hold of because he works nights, and mm -hmm. so... It seems like we have to put this on the agenda for our, our next meeting. Yeah. Lizzie, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, should we get a hold of him specifically and just tell him that it's going to be on the agenda in case he doesn't keep up with, you mm -hmm. know, like, minutes? I think that'd be great. Yeah. Do you want me to get a hold of him? I'd be happy to do that. That'd be lovely. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Okay. Um... Next on the agenda is our local emergency management plan. And I'm not sure. 
Wait, what the Michael, who will work on this is about. Michael can help us with that. Because he sent us, uh, Robin sent this around, and Michael responded that last time he and Chance were, uh, yeah, Chance worked mm -hmm. this. It doesn't seem very complicated, but we don't have an emergency management director. We do not. So, I guess we... Also, this uh, um, um, Keith from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission um, offered to help in any way he can. So maybe when Michael comes back, we can find out how they did this last time. Whether what do you know? Can we use the one from a different town? Can the select board? Well, it's just a form. No, no, no. Since we don't have a plan. an emergency. Oh, emergency management director, you need to hire somebody? Mm -hmm. Or even with a stipend, just going outside, like somebody from Callis or somebody from Hardwick mm -hmm. that knows. Otherwise, does it fall on? Us. Yeah. Or the fire chief. Hardware, Typically, I mean. it falls on us. Um, yeah, I don't. Might be worth a conversation with Paul. It's really right. You had somebody in mind at one point. I did. That fell through. Okay. Well, they moved over, so oh, it's kind of difficult to have, yeah. that, have that work. Yeah. I'll, uh, it doesn't look like it's very complicated, and there should be somewhere in the office a copy of the one from the last time, but Robin would have to dig that out. Yeah. Let's see if I can reach out to Foster Rudy and get his take on that. See what we need to do. Mm. Since we don't have chances and opportunity yeah. to do that with. Alright, so uh, let's mm. move on from that and we will go back to it when uh, Michael is, is, is back with us. Mm. Um, so we have update under updates and other business. First is the Town Hall Reef and Foundation work. I don't know what progress we've made on that. So well, I brought Lizzie. it up last time, and and in Andy Brandy, what <laughs> Lizzie <laughs> said she would. Could we hold off on that until she got a chance to look at it? Yeah. So I did go over. I took a pretty brief look, um, and I didn't. So I looked under. I didn't actually crawl under and like do a very thorough examination. Mm -hmm. And I think I kind of would like to do that at some point when I'm maybe already dirty, um, but I, I didn't see any really glaring things that scared me. Though one place where um, there had been a pier missing at one point that we talked about in the addition on the back. It's right, yeah, it's right in the middle. Yeah, the, so that's actually addition. been short that's up. Somebody, somebody has since put some too many blocks and right. some layers of um, yeah. PT there. So, right. it, I mean, I, you know, it's not like a super professional foundation, but it's um, it seems to be doing what it needs to do for the time being at least. Except it's not, um, the, the building is still not level. And that's right. why the, uh, the right. door won't shut. So. The addition part. But mean. it's not like falling down or anything. But. Yeah. Um, I should I should go again and look more closely at it. Yeah. I was kind of in a rush when I did, but I did know yeah. that that had at least been shored up, so it wasn't going to like you know, keep sagging. Right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Um, the roof obviously needs work. Um, and I just, I did have some thoughts. I looked at the estimate that we had gotten. It. I don't know when this was from, but um, it was from some roofer that isn't from around here. I, I, I'm trying to. Yeah, Rutland. I think he's based in Central Vermont somewhere. So the address here is in Rutland, and I thought it was pretty high. So. Um, I'm not sure like what the process is for getting estimates from local people, but I think we'd have a way better shot yeah. with a local contractor, like yeah. a couple of people. This is the same, co uh, the company that, uh, did the roof here a couple of years oh, ago and it was really hard for the select board at that 
point to find to find someone a contractor. To, yeah. Yeah. to bid it. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a complicated project. So yeah, um, I mean, I would think what, like their estimate was twelve thousand six hundred, and I, I would like you know I don't want to put words in other people's mouths, but mm -hmm. I would think it would be more like somewhere between six and eight, oh. like a lot less. Yeah. But mm -hmm. again, they'd be coming from Rutland, so that's a lot of travel, and yeah, that's true. they probably don't really want to do it, so they probably throw yeah. out a number. Yeah. Um, so as far as our, um, we have this, what's it called? Process for by which we're supposed to if anything is going to be more than eight hundred dollars, it's supposed to eight thousand dollars. Sorry, mm -hmm. supposed to go out to a public, <coughs> public bid. bid. Gotcha. But um, otherwise, it's you could look around. You know, do okay. a responsible uh, survey of what what might be available locally. I mean, they should submit a bid. Yeah. Okay. But. Uh, um, so are we at a point where we're actively looking to have this done? Well, that's what I was asking the board for at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether we could make a commitment to go ahead and get it done with the $15,000 that we have in the town building mm -hmm. fund plus the maybe $7,000 of, of our of money our that's money left. left, mm -hmm. left over. Hopefully yeah. less. But. So... Maybe I should get you a copy of that uh, process. I can't remember the name. Purchasing policy. Purchasing policy. Thank you. Well, yeah, anything under eight thousand dollars. What you're between a thousand and eight thousand um, dollars. You don't have to put it out to a public bid, but you do need to shop around. Yeah. 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 So I'm curious how this works. Uh, being new to the board, so I have like friends in the industry, and I'd be happy to like put this out to three of my friends. Yeah. But I don't know go if that's for it. is no, that considered it. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not Great. a conflict unless you make it a conflict. Got right. it. Okay. <laughs> so don't bid on it yourself. Right. Yeah, okay. that, that would probably that would be a conflict. Don't put it in cut for yourselves. Okay. <laughs> now we're a small town. We can't, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can just separate. ask people you know who do this work and get a price. They could come and look at it. Okay. They could yeah. give you a price, and um, if it's under eight thousand dollars, and then we can entertain it. Yeah. Yeah. So it involves, but not only the roofing itself on the north side, but the soffit work. Yeah, on the same side mm. of the building. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. Because the uh, people who did the bat eradication. Put in some screening or something, some something to keep the bats up. But they said it was really temporary. pretty much temporary. temporary. Yeah. A one-year fix. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Super sure. Um, I don't remember seeing soffit work in the in this estimate, but so yeah. that would probably be a separate. Yeah. But it right. doesn't look like it would be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, I am curious too about um the property line, like as far as setting up staging ladders. Having yeah, them, there's you know, a in the deed. There's something about. You know, room to move around okay. to do repairs on the you know, the property line. That's kind of a issue that we don't really have to deal with. <laughs> it's kind of sketchy, but uh, there is something okay. in the deed that says you can go um, outside. The, you know, it would be nice to mm -hmm. tell the people yeah. you know, the, who are living there that you're going to be moving their stuff. Okay. But Richard put a scaffolding up there last year and there wasn't any concern there was about that. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I had wondered that, that was actually, it kind of held me back a little bit from looking more thoroughly because there was a sign there and then I went around the back and there was, it was like somebody's, you know, little table. Their yard, yeah. Their yard set up, <laughs> so I was, I was feeling like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here without yeah, having talked to them first. I don't think you have to worry about that. The real owner is not around very much, but the tenants kind of take care of the place. And, okay. You know. Um, and then, oh, so there was like a little bit more too, so aside from the roof, so I'll crawl under there one day when I'm dirty. Um, yeah, but you don't have to crawl, I mean, the, the main I mean, part is really fine, the main part is, seems to be fine. Well, so, where was yeah. it that there was, um, there was something that I read where there was concern about powder post beetles in the foundation. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that would be something to, you know, yeah. be good to make sure that it's yeah. still yep. good. Mm -hmm. Um... There's I think there were there. pictures of that in that uh, report that I gave you from yeah. Jan Lewandowski. Oh, I think I have that here, actually. So would we be trying to go at this with two separate 
Like the foundation and the, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so I don't know, I mean, to me the roof seemed like the most pressing, Yeah. you know. Yeah, we wouldn't um, expect one contractor to do both. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I, you know, I didn't think was necessarily like a huge issue yet, but we had talked about the, the, um, the granite steps. Yeah. Um, and I know we talked about cutting them back versus dragging them away from the building. Mm -hmm. I think cutting them back is still going to be a problem because the problem is like that whole space, the, the whole extent of the building behind the steps, even if we cut them down, like, I can't imagine we could get a saw to go down beyond like six inches. Like then you've still got that whole area where rot's going to happen that you can't access to like put anything over it to protect it. Well, we were going to talk to the people who put the steps in mm -hmm. and find out how that could happen because if it won't go down below the soffit, the, the, yeah, the foundation beams, then uh -huh. it wouldn't be worth doing. But yeah, it, uh, um, okay. So I don't know. Um, so, but but that was in the ARPA plan, but we didn't approve that plan. Right. Yeah. So, so then are we kind of like just tabling that? Well, you know, if we have money left over, mm -hmm. it's, I think it would be a good thing to look into. Okay. Um, I think that's all for that. Okay. Okay. Um, can we move on to the Mopon drain plan? Yeah, Ben and Louie should have been here by now. Hmm. So, uh, should we table that for now? Well, if they were going to come. Well, I'd like to know something that, about it. I, I mean, think that's why yeah, everyone else is here. Is here. I mean, yeah, that's why, you know, yeah, I mean, this is like we a shock. can't table the whole thing. shock that all of a sudden yeah. to find okay, out good. that this is even on the agenda yeah. with the select board without any... That's my point exactly, was that that uh, we got some information from the Regional Planning Commission that this project was being looked into, yeah, and just the adjoining property owners aren't even Aware. notified yet, so right. now we're so, starting that. I'm so sorry I didn't call you. I called Well, Brian it Brown. seems like we're being a little bit... Oh, good. <laughs> so this may be a little bit premature. Yeah. Isn't right. this on? A, it's a private. It's not town. Well, that's... Right. Well, so I mean, that's their, it's their, it's their, somebody's it's their, private property. That's their, their position, but that doesn't mean that the town can't have it's anything a to do with it. Landmark. I mean, not we've sure, never, we've yeah. never been responsible. It's always been on Back her shoulders to I know. The, the beavers. The dam is, yeah. I mean, she owns the dam. Okay, so let's start with a person who's here to tell us something about it. What's your name? Michelle Braun. Michelle see Braun. And you're with Friends of the Lindsay River. And we um, we work on removing barriers from streams, both um, dams and culverts that um, block fish passage and you know passage for other aquatic critters. And um, Liz Hunt, who owns the Mill Pond Dam contacted us for help with that dam because it's a significant hazard dam, it's a liability for her, it's an annual expense for her, and she feels that it's impeding her ability to sell her property. So uh, the one point there that makes sense to me is that somebody has determined it's a significant uh, yeah, this, hazard. so the state has a dam safety division that does regular inspections mm -hmm. of dams, and that dam safety determined it as a significant it's hazard. Been listed it that way for many years. Yeah, which what that means is if it were to fail, it would cause substantial right. damage downstream. So that's a analysis by a state engineer, perhaps. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I went out and visited um, to check it out and um, had uh, Julie Butler from United States Fish and Wildlife with me as well, they're a funder for us. And we took a look at it and it's really complicated. <laughs> if you've been, you know, if you're familiar with the site at all, 
there's the pond, and then there's the dam, and Liz's well, and the house Liz lives in, and the house that's been abandoned that used to be over the street. Mm -hmm. over the, street. the mill house. And between the two houses is her septic. Mm -hmm. And then the neighbors, the adjacent property, and maybe this is yours, <laughs> mm -hmm. workshop is up on the, on the wall. Mm -hmm. And then there's a culvert. Um, so that culvert is four feet wide. Mm -hmm. Right now, the width of that stream is 22 feet. And it only goes into that culvert because there's a little weir. There's a, like a little mini dam right before the culvert with a little small opening that concentrates the stream so that it goes What's through. What's 20 feet wide? The stream. Sure. The so stream. Painful dimensions on that stream are 22.6 feet. Stream after yeah. it goes over the dam, after Correct. it goes over the spillway? Correct. It's 20 feet wide? 22.6. So if the dam were to fail, so it's, it's four times wider than the culvert, five mm -hmm. times wider than the culvert under normal mm -hmm. circumstances. And so if the dam were to fail, I think it's quite possible that it would take out the culvert and the road. Mm -hmm. And take potentially road, sure. that house that's built up on rock just beyond. I don't know what's going on down there, but it looked a little precarious. So anyway, mm -hmm. that all looked really complicated. Um, it certainly would also take out Liz's septic. The stream goes under that old house, so it would take out the old house. So if the dam failed, it's a really big mess. But if we take the dam out in a controlled way, you know, if we had engineers come and design a dam removal project, um, some of that might still be unavoidable. Like um, it might be hard to work with the septic system in particular and the old house that goes out over the stream. Mm -hmm. The old, you so, talk about the old house, that's been partially dismantled, right? Well, it not Liz's it, house, but the other. Right, it no longer crosses the stream, yeah. but it's very much intact. It's in, the foundation's in the stream. Yeah. So it's, it's in the stream. No, I thought somebody started to dismantle They started time. to, and then they realized they'd have to move their electric line, and yeah. that stopped the project yeah. from being, you know, yeah. it was one of those deals. They, it wasn't a good idea. That's yeah. what done. So, so the state has a program right now called the Flood Resilient Communities Fund. Um, and the, the Flood Resilient Communities Fund um, is designed to um, primarily fund um, home buyouts, um, like a FEMA buyout, but it's not actually FEMA, it's the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, so they have funding for home buyouts and also for dam removal projects. So I'm familiar with the fund because we might use it for some dam removal projects. And I talked to Stephanie Smith with that Vermont Emergency Management that has the fund about whether this could be a potential buyout because if you do that, you achieve many goals. Liz gets out of her property we get all of those structures out of the okay. floodplain, mm -hmm. and then it opens the possibility of looking at taking out the dam. So that's where we are in the conversation, is Liz just talked to Stephanie last week, maybe the week before. And so Liz would very much like to go forward oh, with sure. the buyout. Yeah. So that could be two different things, buyout yeah. and then dam removal. Right. Could be two different analysis, right. maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Um, when we looked at the dam, did you look at the pond bottom the behind the dam? It's pretty solid and it's um, it's not like there's a the dam is a wall of water that you could dive off the dam into. Right. Um, it's got sediment built yeah. up behind. Yeah. 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 How deep is it? It's not deep, but I mean, you can walk maybe eight, in ten a pair feet. of barn boots. What? Eight, ten feet eight farther ten. out, okay. the deepest yeah. parts, okay. maybe. But I, when the town put the culvert in, they beefed up the dam and diverted the traffic up the, and across the dam. That was the detour. 
when they put that culvert in. And so Which cul what culvert? One in on Foster Hill Road. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. I don't know who would be alive. Ken King might remember the work they did on the dam, but um, uh, there isn't too many people left. Grady? Grady might know that. Yeah. Um, my impression was that they had definitely beefed it up enough that they could drive cars and trucks over, over it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you over cannot do that now. Over the dam, you mean? Yeah. I don't know who <laughs> the engineer is that you, you're yeah. talking with, but I don't know if they have a serious survey. This is, this is my, this is all I would question, and um, yeah, I just, you know, the, the money it would take for what you're proposing, I don't know where that comes from. If it's my taxpayer dollars, I'm probably opposed to it. Um, the town, the, the asset of the mill pond is that the fire hydrant is there, and that's the water supply mm -hmm. for all the South Woodbury and beyond. I mean, we really don't mm -hmm. have that many... Mm. Hydrants. Hydrants. Yeah, we have. They're available in the middle of winter time, especially in that one's. Mm. I mean, when it's 20 below, it didn't save Kyle's house down there. Do you have any idea what, uh, who owns the property under the pond? Because on the tax I map, it just shows a circle around the pond and is not connected to any other yeah, property. That would so be somebody's going to have to. Interesting question to figure out. Research that. I think it's probably public waters of the state of. Vermont, I don't think it's big enough for that. But. No, I think it's big enough either. But. But, I mean, I always assumed it was Grady's because he owns the majority of the mm -hmm. land, the land there. But I, you know, property. if the stream mm -hmm. was put back, would our property lines extend mm -hmm. to the stream or? I, I mean, think, it wouldn't. I, I think the pond would probably stay a pond, and I absolutely can't promise that I at this the, point. It would be a matter for the engineering. I think the beavers would like to make see that stay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not a beaver pond now, right? The uh, beavers are there. Oh, they are yeah. there. They occasionally okay. uh, augment the uh, man made dam. Yeah. There. Okay. And, yeah, they try and. Not too often, and they're not really all that persistent no. about it. But they've, they've got a nice big pond down below, so. Right. That's true. Yeah. Got, <laughs> that could be their summer place. <laughs> got a dozen ponds farther up, so yeah. it's not. It's not. Yeah, really it's a whole all funny. All the way down from County Road. Mm -hmm. but that doesn't stop them from trying. It. Yeah. <laughs> so there's I, always a new generation. I know uh, Keith Coven from CVRPC talked to a couple of you, I think. Well, mm -hmm. he did some emails. I don't yeah. know yeah. if actually okay. talked. I didn't speak with him. But okay. we did exchange no. emails. I did send him an email. He, I got that email too. Um, yeah. I sent him an email about it. And he, so, um, depending on whether we think, if, if it seems like the dam removal might just not be possible because the whole situation is too complicated, um, then it might just be a straight um, buyout of the of Liz's property and then, you know, leave the dam as it is. But, um... Then somebody and, would have to own the property. Exactly. And they would own the dam yeah. as well. Right. So, oh. the, um, typically in a, in a property buyout like that, the uh, municipality winds mm -hmm. up being the owner of the property, if they are willing to be. And that's um, a question that that Keith and I both had for you all is whether you're willing to own that property. Are you Nikki? Property. Yeah. I haven't seen you for a long time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> so where are we? Yeah, we're on that subject. Are you talking about? The, sorry to interrupt. The, are you yeah. talking she, about owns, the, she owns the house on the other side of the road. The yellow oh, okay. house with the yeah. Red trim. Yeah. So uh, we're talking about the. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ben and Libby are on their way. We th oh. we all thought it was down at the regular place. Oh, oh the town. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I just just guessed where it might be and came here. <laughs> Sorry. No idea. Uh. So and it doesn't have to be the town. It could be a different like public benefit entity. So it could be um, like a land trust if one were interested. Or could it be one of the adjoiners? Or the if state they wanted to not. take it. Yeah, it usually has to be a public benefit right. uh, entity, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So, um, come on in. Can I take these? Is this your stuff? Um, Michael. Is that your no, stuff? No, that's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just got to go. Okay. 
Oh, no, sit down. We've already kind of started because we were all off schedule. But um, this is uh, Michelle Braun from the Friends of the Winooski, and she started explaining to us what somebody has in mind and that there's uh, money from the state uh, flood resilient community fund that funds both buyouts of homes that are at risk and also dam removal right. and so so can we just ask questions yeah yes please so Sorry. one of the big questions that i have and i'm sure others might also have is if they get rid of this whole pond what does that do for the neighboring properties in terms of like that that beautiful waterfall that we have going down like is that even going to be affected because i assume the water comes from the mountain um and also like just yeah can can somebody talk about that aspect and how it's going to affect the rest of us if they if they get rid of this this well, dam so removing the dam doesn't necessarily drain the pond. Oh, it doesn't. It <laughs> depends on, like if the pond is spring fed, it depends on the flow from above, it depends on the beavers, as someone pointed out. Um, but that would be part of, um, part of the engineering design work ahead of removing the dam would be looking at um, what might happen with the pond after the dam came out. So the reason I put this on the agenda for tonight was just to start the conversation about maybe having a community meeting where you could all ask these questions, but it sort of got uh, ahead. <laughs> I don't have tons okay. of answers at this point because the, um, a lot of the answers come with the engineering work that is <coughs> down the road. But like how much control do we have over that? Because it's going to directly affect like mine yeah. and Doug's property for sure. Or like we really don't have any control. I mean, no. it's Liz is desperate to sell her house, and she can't <clears throat> obviously find a buyer. She's had it on the market for a couple of years, and uh, you know this is her m move of desperation <laughs> is try to find somebody, some way to alleviate you know her property. Well, I don't think you yeah. should say we don't have any any way to. Uh, have have input on the process. Well, no, I, we don't know I, hopefully we have some input. I, mean, I know input, Liz wants it. Yeah. But it's not a, you know, I mean, it's a, it is a private property and the dam's owned by Liz. So, you know, I mean, Still we there's no survey that shows yeah. that. I mean, nope. the, and, and Liz has been paying extra money every year. Um, the state charges her to have that dam. Mm -hmm. I mean, to maintain I mean, that dam. That kind of crazy. Because, because of the, the is, because of the it liability. It does sound kind of crazy, but. Yeah. That's Everybody who has a dam has to pay. Has to pay. Mm -hmm. Brady and Sheila pay on another dam over. Uh, um. and, and what exactly is the liability? What 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 is wrong with the dam? Because it doesn't. Oh, there's no head behind it. It's in poor condition. It. That's right, but there's no. Yeah, there's and, nothing behind it to push it anywhere. It's, well, there's the pond and the stream above the pond. But, but it, the it, pond is. is yeah, I'm sorry. Is there a stream? At, at any rate, the state dam mm -hmm. safety division has classified it as a significant as a, hazard as a, as a dam problem, because problem if it dam. were to fail, it would cause significant damage downstream. But what it, kind of significant damage? Because yeah, I'm downstream. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's the culvert under the road that goes to your property would fail if that dam washed out. Is what the so it, it would get plugged flood up. Our property it would, then? could flood your property, could flood my property, it could wash the road totally out. Oh. That would be the kind of thing. I mean, you go. You we've had, had some seriously, had we've had some out, seriously right? high floods. Uh, yeah. Not that that culvert's managed to handle it for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of really serious high water incidents in there. Is there a stream feeding, or is that yes. just ground and stream? No, it's no, a stream. There's, no, there's, there's, there's a stream, so it comes down through all the yeah. rest of everything. Yeah. yeah. Had a I mean, there so might be springs, too. Yeah. Not a question, just a statement. Yeah. So in the past, um, Liz has asked myself and my daughter, who have trapping um, licenses, to help her 
she is out there every day removing sticks to prevent her place from flooding. It's a huge liability. Actually, she uh, calls me very much. Well, now, right. <laughs> we used to do the trapping. Um, yeah. But for her, it's, it's fearful. Yeah. And it's a lot of work. And being her age, she wants to protect her property. And it's a lot to handle when it's just you. Yeah. So this is something she's done for years, years, making sure that that water doesn't build up to take out her septic or to take out her house. So for me, I feel like she has the right to be here to defend herself because well, that's the why neighbors we aren't going out to help her with this. Well, we didn't even, I didn't even know that she had a problem with it. So like, I mean, but do you talk with her? Do you yeah, I've with talked her? with her, but like the, she doesn't tell me about that. How am I supposed to just telepathically assume that she her, has a problem. It's not, it may be beautiful, but it's a liability. That's her house that she has to protect. And when the water gets up so far, I mean, that's, yeah. So are, are you on the house on the other side of Foster Hollow, the one that's up above the, the, the up there in the pond? Yeah. Foster Hill. That's a, I, oh, that's you. Yeah, okay. so they're like the this? next house up the from side. On the, the that's built up on. Mm -hmm. Stone. Yeah, yeah we, we. I don't know. We have still never figured out who actually owns the dam. So. Yeah. Nikki so, is right across the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're up the hill on the other side of the dam. Our property, we think, hits right to the dam. Your right. your spring is there, right on the. Corner Her spring the, is yeah. down. On the corner of the house. Well, this is this is the question that I had for whoever owns the spring house. That's Nikki. That okay? Is that actually is that your actual water source or? Um, I think just, so. I. Yeah, I it mean, was, I, my was. husband knows all this, but he's not allowed to vote because he's not a U.S. citizen. So, um, <laughs> even though he pays taxes every year and has had a green card for the past 12. Um, but, yeah, so so I, as far as the, the technical, you know, questions that should seem obvious, I, I don't know. But, yeah, if, if he says so, then I, uh, I believe him. <laughs> I rebuilt that spring box for the previous owner at one point, and that was our main so there that was the whole village's water supply, yeah. that one's straight. Oh, really? Yeah. That was a question that we had, is whether mm -hmm. that was still active. Mm -hmm. And, like, how what, what would be the impact of, of that? I don't know. It's something that would have to be figured out. But, like, I guess when you say that you're not sure and that it has to be figured out, like, are these, are these questions going to be, like, taken into consideration? That's what I was saying before, like, those of us who are going to be directly affected somehow, like, you know, whether it's aesthetically or whether it's through something that's, you know, like, you know, the water source, like, how, how much, how much of a say are we going to have in this whole thing? Because how much will we be affected by this? You know what I mean? Like, you got to have obviously really engineers and stuff, but... Well, so Firstly, um, the first question is the, the buyout, and you know Liz would like to go through this buyout process, and it, and would like to um, find out whether the town is open to owning the property. That's an important question mm -hmm. to get figured out. Part of the buyout process would be deed research and a survey because the parcel um, there's the parcel maps show. Uh, the dam on your property. Yeah. Um, so that has to get sorted out. Although dam safety is super clear that it belongs to the Hunt property. I don't know on what yeah, basis. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> they're very sure about it. It's um, a surprise to us. But has there been a survey? There, is there any survey of that property? In, I don't know. No. Okay, so uh, they, they had an unofficial post one, there. But, a what? An unofficial, unofficial survey. It's an unofficial survey. I know. Well, that's, they, they, they didn't like the where the driveway was. Mo looked at it. And, uh, oh. Uh, 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 said, well, you know. They, uh, had, they had a surveyor here. come in. Uh, Guy Dwight from over in uh, Marshfield came and surveyed their property. But, uh, Whose property? Never, who, the Dodgers Came uh, and surveyed uh, Hunt's, Hunt's property. property. Yeah. Cause Mo had a survey done, I think, yeah, before we bought our property, which was in 2020, uh, 2000. Right, uh, 2001, yeah. and I Mo had some granite pillars put in. Now, whether that was an official survey or not, I don't know. But anyway, there's granite pillars there. <laughs>
Yeah. But you don't, you don't have the survey, or was it? I don't have anything from him. Town, well, somebody's going to have to be looking into that. Yeah, somebody has yeah. to figure that out. Yeah. At any rate, so if the bio can happen, that can happen all by itself and doesn't affect other people really. Can I? Can you? The bio by who? The by, town. By the state. By the state. Yeah. And by which, Janet's property. Part of the buy state. By Janet's property. Is buying it. Would buy it. The well, it would be purchased with funds from the Flood Resilient Communities Fund, which is administered by the Vermont Emergency Management okay. Division. Who would end up owning it is a question. I see. And it could be the town, it could be the state, maybe the Department of Fish and Wildlife, it could be a land trust. I so see. A few options. Has to be a public. It has to be a public. Private. Yeah. I see. Oh, look, but, once the public town, but if the town took ownership of it, they'd have to keep it forever? I mean, they couldn't sell it? To, to join her? It would have to be kept as open space in perpetuity. Yeah, well, um, that's like a park kind of thing or whatever. Yeah. Publicly accessible. So that has to so, be determined before you can have a transfer, right? You got to buy a buyer, seller, and a buyer, and there's the not one, have to buy it, right? not one of those agencies that are willing to take title. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's the first thing, and then that has to happen. Um, in mm -hmm. order to really even get into the possibility of the dam removal. So they would look at, we, Friends of the Mnuski would hire engineers to do a feasibility study and preliminary design, which would look at some of these you know, important questions about what would happen with the spring house, what would happen with the culvert. And what about um, wildlife? There's a huge turtle population, mm -hmm. huge, there's mergansers, they're all nesting. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of so I would think the friends of the news would be. Yep, we love those guys. Yeah, interested <laughs> in those things. And yeah. now they will yeah, not be there. Yeah, the turtles are fish, you know. I mean, some well, of them. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 would, we would sort our way through this. Um, but the, um, the wildlife question, I think, is, is probably less impactful than, unless, there, unless there's a rare, threatened, or endangered species in there. Um, that's less of a concern because they will go upstream or, you know. Fly away. Fly away, yes. Um, Been doing it for years. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but the more important question is what are the impacts on infrastructure? So what's the impact on your water source and what's the impact on the culvert? And would the, there, it's possible that you can't even contemplate mm -hmm. removing the dam unless you first deal with the culvert because it's so much undersized. So, mm -hmm. a lot of questions have to get sorted out, mm -hmm. and so, certainly, certainly, we wouldn't take any action that negatively impacted any of those. Yeah, things. I guess that's like what I was trying to get at was, like, is all this going to be decided in a vacuum because one person has, you know, a situation, or is everybody going to be considered? like mm -hmm. equally and fairly you know what I mean because it does impact it's not just like a matter of like you know well the, the dam at this time is believed to be owned by Liz Hunt and it, that makes it entirely her decision as to what to do with it um, but, you but could... there are definitely design considerations that might complicate that but you could do the buyout without her, without a plan without for the dam. Without a plan right? for the dam, mm -hmm. yeah. But then, well, I, I don't know if we could because whoever takes ownership of it would be taking ownership of the dam that they mm -hmm. probably don't want either. Right. <laughs> so, so we probably would need to work on. Well, but it, but it could both, only be the town need to work or on both at the same time. Okay. So if the sense. town took over the ownership, then the town would be more. Um, liable. liable to be engaged in the actual planning of how the dam would be removed or what would be, so the town would have right. a say in it then because they're basically the property owners. Correct. Um, and is there money, uh, state money then to support, for instance, taking the culvert out and putting a, yeah. there is state money for that? And federal. Yeah. And federal. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's grants. There's, it's grants. Exactly. There's, is there not money for repairing the dam? There is not. No. no. That just doesn't exist. It does not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. However, if private money could repair the dam. Yeah. If someone wanted to repair the dam, they could do that. Yeah. I like how much is that. Well, if you look at okay. if you look at Curtis Pond over <laughs> in Calus, they've been fundraising. Oh. Um, their the cost of the dam repair for Curtis Pond is about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's a big pond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this wouldn't be quite that much, but it would be very. It would still, still be high. really in, quite in, in that ballpark. Yeah. You think so? Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of the thousands. The Nichols Pond, the dam there, had to be repaired maybe ten or fifteen years ago, and um, it was all pretty much funded with private private money. And that was how much did that come out to? It was three hundred and fifty thousand oh. dollars. But that's also right a much bigger body of water. I haven't never looked yeah, at the mill pond except for just driving, mm -hmm. but it, it's way smaller, right? Yeah, it's the, well, the mill pond is about five acres, but the dam is surprisingly Big. large. Yeah. It's a pretty large dam. And it's been in poor condition for a long time. The, I looked back through records, and the Regional Planning Commission was trying to find funding to repair it in like 1985 mm -hmm. and didn't manage it at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Um, I just have a question about the the fire hydrant there, because I I think I think it's filled directly from the pond, mm -hmm. as I remember the mm -hmm. tube sure. just runs into the mm -hmm. pond, and that's like the major water source for mm -hmm. fighting fires in South Woodbury. Yeah, um, I mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's yeah. a <laughs> serious asset for the village and, yeah. and beyond. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, I mean, well, maybe the fire department could buy it. No, probably not. <laughs> They're busy. <laughs> they got, they got they their got own projects. They got their own projects. They did, the town would be paying for it. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. But I think that is a pretty big concern, actually. I mean, and I guess yeah. your engineers would look at that, too, because it's, yeah. I mean, having had a recent fire there and watched them use it, yeah. it minus oh. 11 degrees in January, it was pretty important. Yes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, so neither of these projects is... Um, particularly fast moving. Um, I'll say I used to work for the town of Northfield and I managed um, all of the FEMA buyouts after Irene. Mm -hmm. um, so they, the buyouts take a couple years. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did a dam removal project also coincidentally in Northfield on Bull Run. Um, we started that project at the end of 2017 and the dam came out in 2020, so like two and a half years. So it's not super speedy. Um, so fast, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tend to go fast, but the um, I tend to try to make these things go faster. I'm a little impatient. Mm -hmm. But the design work is very careful and very um, meticulous. Yeah, exactly. So it's the buyout happened and the town agreed to take uh, ownership, would the money still be available for uh, the engineering and whether or not to take out the dam? Yes. Is there, I heard the rumor, is there a timeline on this buyout? Nope. There's not. Okay, so. This is the first conversation. Someone was saying that the money was only going to be available until December. Yeah, that's what I heard. Oh, Jennifer the money has to be committed. Oh, committed. Okay. December. But everything doesn't happen before right. then. Okay. Right. That's so awesome. that's pretty fast, though, if the money's committed. It's sort of marked, right? It's not spent. Okay, okay. But, yeah. I, <laughs> I did a FEMA project here a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Has, has anyone done an official value of her property besides no. what she's listed it as? No, that would because have to that's, be done as She's well. listed it as quite high. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I mean, you know, I, it doesn't seem like that would be what you guys would buy her out at, mm -hmm. uh, well, but I don't really know. Well, you know. normally what you do is look at the tax value. I don't know when you all last had a reappraisal. 2007. Seven. Oh my. Yeah. A long time ago. So I was going to say usually add 20 or 30 percent to that, mm -hmm. but in this case we might, you know. We'll probably need to be an appraisal though. 
Well, well yeah. so so you use that um, estimate based on the tax value in order to calculate how much money um, you're going to need from the flood resilient communities fund. Okay. But and then once they have said yes, you can have that funding. The first thing you do is hire a, a professional right. appraisal. I mean, you know, if the price of the property were in reason, there might be people that were willing yeah. to join together and Purchase own it, it and have a some kind of community thing. But you know, we really just need a much better idea of what that would be. The bottom line. Yeah, but the, there would be a lot of expenses. It still would be. It would probably be too exactly. crazy to do yeah. just because mm -hmm. of the dam. Mm -hmm. and, the demolition you know, expense is is extraordinary. Really yeah. Yeah. And that's part of it is taking the buildings out of there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for the select board. I, I in the I heard again only from talking to neighbors <laughs> that there was a request once to have a town beach or to make a town beach, but that the select board and maybe Michael can remember was really like, no, 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 we don't want that liability uh, yeah, in yeah. our town. No, I think it's just because there never was a location, mm -hmm. right. and that wouldn't be enough. I don't think that would be big enough to. Have a beach in Doug's backyard. <laughs> and usually it's the neighbors. It used to be. It used to be the town beach. Really? Yeah. So people did swim there? Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've swum there before. Yeah. recently. When yeah. we moved here, there was a rope string off a tree, and, and all the kids who grew up in um, uh, Natalia's generation, they all, <laughs> that was yeah. the big swimming yeah. hole. It was a nice bit of a swimming hole. It's yeah. kind of grown. It's grown in a lot now. Yeah, it's it's tilted in. And it's deep. The, the if you weeds. don't mind kicking the weeds, no. it's okay. It's shallower. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's shallower yeah, now. The weeds with the, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's still a good 10 feet right by the dam. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. when you, the first mm -hmm. About there. 20 feet out, maybe. Yeah. I love the idea of Town Beach. I'm on the Planning Commission too, and it it has come up a bit, but we haven't we haven't discussed it really in depth. But it was like one of the points um, from the town plan, one of many 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 points that was kind of on the table for discussion at some point. Um, but it, I don't know. We haven't really gotten anywhere with it. Yeah. But I think it's a great idea. I would love to see that happen somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you like the town beach? As long as it's down on this is property. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just look over it. <laughs> if we're going to lose the waterfall, I'd take the town beach. Yeah, that's right. And if I was going to lose the pond, I'd take the town I mean, beach. I'm, I'm not okay with losing the waterfall. That's a significant part of our property. It, it there feeds may, our pond. I mean, it's not me. It's just so a natural waterfall. It's the outflow of the culver, really, which... Oh, on the yeah. other side of the road, it's just yeah. shooting out of the culvert. It yeah, actually, but like, like out it, into the air. it's it would just still do that thing. because yeah. of the topography. It like, will. You yeah. So you, you probably okay? Because that's the thing. I don't know this stuff. So, like, even if they do whatever they do over across the street, like that's mm -hmm. still going to be yep. active. Yeah, but there's a whole stream okay. coming down through there. Yeah. It's still going to be. Now we're getting independent. But they're oh, talking good. about a okay. much larger culvert, which would mean a big, a larger outflow Volume. onto your property. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. The um, al also on the um, the dam as a waterfall. Um, dams were historically built on top of natural bedrock cascades. Yeah. So a lot of the time, when we go to remove the dams, we find there's a natural cascade there. And I have no idea whatsoever if that would be the case in this place. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's I pretty think there's ledge common. There. there is ledge yeah. Yeah. on Somewhere both sides. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. No, there's ledge on both sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we put the town map together, mm -hmm. the bedrock map, we mapped along there. Mm -hmm. There's ledge on both sides. Mm -hmm. And it's only so about a few meters deep. Mm -hmm. so. Likely there would be a natural... So there's a, na there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a natural nick point oh, okay. that's actually already there. Oh, okay, and yeah. that's why you're saying like every, it's that's not going to be part of the thing that's going to disappear. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't. No, I would think that they would want to leave it kind of natural. Mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. We're, not, we're not allowed to remove bedrock. Right. Okay. And you want to make it really expensive, then we can remove bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> I ask that honestly because 
you know, we're trying to work on fish passage, and I go out with the fish people, and they're like, no, there's all this bedrock here. And I'm like, we, we can do something about that, but mm. no, they don't do it. For fish, I guess the culvert's probably as big a problem as the dam. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's, mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah. a 20, 20, 30 foot rise up to the culvert. Yeah. So and, yeah. and the culvert mm -hmm. under Route 14 is not fish friendly. Yeah. It's not fish friendly at all. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's I mean, antithetical to fish. The salad is a fish. Some, something for fish is. It's it doesn't. It won't help. With, <laughs> well, it won't help with fish passage, and I wouldn't say that it would. But it would help improve the habitat quality. No, I watched the muskrats and the beaver and everything cross the road right there. Otters. Yeah, mm. so a lot of it's not a lot of traffic come across. There. Really? Yeah. Mm. They go up over the. Road. They go up over the road oh. a lot. Mm. 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 Some of them go try to go through the culvert, but not really. I think they don't. That's a bad idea. Yeah. yeah this, the, the there's a really good painted turtle population. I mean, it's pretty impressive, actually. Yeah. All right. So in uh, one of the emails I got from Keith, you mentioned I think the first we were and mentioned Friends of the Winooski and like three or four other who run it, emergency management and, and other others with, who else was involved, another agency or two? Or? Nobody. Maybe just dam safety? Like you, well, dam safety, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. U.S. Fish and Wildlife, okay. Mm -hmm. huh. I, mean, I guess I would like to request that as the adjoining neighbors and property owners that we would be informed of how it proceeds, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the town will let us know if they get involved. Yeah, in that way. But, um, this is really just the just the first foray into this. Yeah, it's um, it's going to take us a little while. It's kind of a slap in the face for all of us that we yeah. find. We found find out it. through the grapevine. Well, yeah. I mean, I I happened to hear that this though. was mentioned, but that's the thing. Like, I that I think to Doug's point, like. Beyond just like hoping that we come across it on mm -hmm. front porch forum, which you know, I sometimes it ends up in my regular inbox, other times I find it in spam like a week later. Like, you know what I mean? It's not a reliable way for well, the plan was to plan uh -huh. tonight to start talking about um, how to bring everybody who's had the concern and to have some kind of discussion with these various agencies and I think we still should do that but at least we know now that there's nothing uh, immediate. I mean we only got this emails like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So and you did call Brian and Judy no? Shatney, didn't you? Well spoke? I emailed them. I don't okay. know if Brian checked his email anymore. Yeah, but. yeah so pretty new to everybody. <laughs> okay. Huh? I did tell them today about it. They yeah. didn't know anything. Oh, okay. This is not... Uh, the <laughs> only person I had an email for was Michael Sadler. <laughs> probably That's how we found <laughs> I couldn't even find a phone number for you guys. We're only on cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You can cell phone access. People don't know that even if you only have a cell phone, you can still be in the little phone book. Can you? Okay. You can? Yeah. Yes, you can. I didn't know that yeah. either. Well, see, thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's the only reason we have yeah. a landline. I wanted to get rid of that, but we wanted to be in the phone uh -huh. book. No, cell phones will work. Cool. Mm -hmm. We'll have to go look in the front of it and see who to call. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does it make sense, I'm asking you guys, I guess, um, to take contact information from all the interested parties just to try to, like, be good about keeping sure. people in the loop? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys want to leave yeah, on the yeah. 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 Um, yeah, how about this? Mm -hmm. uh, how many people are you Yes. I have some blank paper yeah. here. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, can we go over the plan? Just uh, are we winding down, or are we still I planning? Think we're, oh. we're just we have a lot, of, lot more questions to ask, and a lot more. Uh, well, what's your next step? Yeah, what, what, Michelle. Where well, are we going from here? So I need to figure out. I need to find out from you, which is why Keith contacted you, whether the town is willing to own the property um, at the mm -hmm. end of the buyout, whether the town is willing to be the, the buyout. Um, 
So that's step one. So that's okay. If the town is willing to be the buyer, then we'll start. Um, we have to make an application to the Flood Resilient Communities Fund, and um, and that will include estimating the value of the property and the cost of demolition and that kind of thing. Um, legal fees, hazardous site stuff. Um, so we'll put together that application, submit it to um, emergency management, and then we'll um, start taking those <coughs> steps. If the town does not want to own the property, then I need to keep working on finding someone who does want to own the property, um, whether that's Vermont Fish and Wildlife or a land trust. Um, land trust seems a little unlikely just because it's a very small yes. parcel and it shares a driveway and so mm. it's we not, have a, not a great... We have a local land trust, the Northern River Land yes. Trust. Oh, you do? I happen to be on the board, okay. but we don't, do any, we don't do any ownership. All oh. we do is conservation, okay. easements. Easements, yeah. Okay. We could form a nonprofit organization. <laughs> I'll I'll ask um, I'll ask Stephanie about the ownership um, possibilities. I'm pretty sure it can't um, be a private. Like a non-profit. Um, 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 So that's one thing we should keep talking about and getting, we probably should check with our insurance provider to see how they feel about liability and... Because that's going to be a huge one. It's mm -hmm. going to be a big one. Huge. Sure. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that towns, people would have to vote on it. We would have to bring it to town vote. meeting. No, well... We, we would. We would have to. We would have to. If it involved money, you mean, or...? Just develop liability. The ownership. Just taking the, something yeah. off the tax rolls and putting it into the town's hands is yeah. that's all. That that's that Very would have that that would have that would have to go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Would have to go to town meeting. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I know there's a hot contingent in town that would <laughs> probably scream about that for sure. Well, it needs to. It would have to come up no matter what. You know. When you say town meeting, do you mean one of these, or do you mean that no. March thing? No, town meeting, March. town oh. meeting, the March mm -hmm. thing. All, all well, the, <laughs> the reason I ask is because, like, I, I usually have to work that day, which is why I've been to, like, one or two in the well, entire time. We're trying really hard to move it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we did to move it to Saturday, actually. So we're going to oh, do it on, so we're oh, going to be doing it on the weekends. <laughs> That would be really helpful for those of us that don't work for the yeah. state or a well, school. That's why we did that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. We're, yeah. we're trying to make sure that we have higher well, attendance. That did pass at uh, town meeting. It did pass at town meeting. Yeah. We haven't implemented it yet. So there's no more Tuesday town meetings. Saturday. It's going to be Saturday. Yep. Michelle, can I ask a question just to clarify? So if the town did take ownership of that property, would the actual cost of purchasing it be paid for by that grant that you're talking about? So the town wouldn't have to come up with that money. No. Okay. No. And the money to, if the dam were taken down, the money to do that, would that also be paid for by the grant? Yeah. So the town would really not pay anything, but then they would just take ownership? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We'd assume the, 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 yeah, expense, of the, the expense of, of upkeep. Yeah. But wait a minute though. Is it true that the upkeep's like two hundred and fifty bucks a year? Or no, that that's just a little fee that a little fee that every charges to oh. the state charges every to dam owner has to pay to the state to for inspection. State. Oh, inspection so that's fee. different. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, it's like yeah. three twenty five, three fifty, I think. Right? Yeah, that's right. different depending on the size. The of size the of the dam and the integrity of the structure. Yeah. and there is a possibility, and the engineers would be able to tell us this if the dam was removed that. There could still be a pond there, on there. Mm. especially if there's ledge involved. Right, um, it just might be smaller. It might be okay. smaller, or it might yeah. it might be the same. Or the beaver might yes. make it bigger. Right, <laughs> and, then, yeah. and that's a different thing. <laughs> I have a follow-up question, I guess, too. Um, is there a way to have that feasibility study done without taking ownership 
to help make that decision? Well, yes, in theory. Um, we could do the feasibility study first, um, the, the dam removal feasibility study. The only hitch is that we would have to decide that we were going to do the buyout, the buyout. in order to have the funds to do the feasibility study. Mm. So gotcha. So we wouldn't be and we've got a little chicken and egg thing yeah. going on there. Mm -hmm. okay. We might be able to work that out. I'll, I can um, yeah, meet with uh, Stephanie at BEM and see about some of those details. In such a study, like there's no way to include looking into the possibility of um, shoring off the existing dam or rebuilding or anything like that. Would they look into that at all? You know there's there's, no, funding there's no funding to, to do to that. Do that. So okay. It's removal or status quo. But it sounds more like your question is would they at least, even yeah. though they wouldn't fund it or anything, would the engineers can give you any information on that? They wouldn't. No, okay. they're not. Because it would be an expense. Yes, yeah. so yeah. I can see that. Yeah. No one wants to keep old dams. That's kind of the bottom line. It's too much of a liability. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people who have private ponds want to keep their dams. Mm. That's yeah. totally different. Why? Okay. <laughs> and this private owner does not want to keep their dams. Does not want to keep right. their dams. No, she doesn't care. She out. does care. Don't say that. She wants out. She, she wants, wants to leave. She wants to sell her property. She wants right. to get out of her property. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't care. Not there's there's a pond there. That's the whole issue is we all consider ourselves owners of the pond. You know, whether it's not the dam itself, but yeah. you know, we're, the pond is part of our property. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is a... And part of our know, lives. It's a consideration for all of us. And, and your property you know, values. And your well, value. I mean, yeah. obviously, if the pond is gone, then that's going to change our values. And mm -hmm. yeah. is mm -hmm. that a compensatable or not? That would be something we would have to consider and think about lawsuits yeah. or whatever, you know, I mean, you guys got yeah. deep pockets or not, I don't know. Where is, no pockets. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where are you based out of the Friends of Lemuski? Where is that organization from? Montpelier. Montpelier. But it's not considered on your tax bill saying you got water frontage. No. Right. So you're not getting taxed on this. She is. Liz yeah. is getting taxed on this. relying rate. And Brian. So and the view doesn't Brady doesn't Brady. affect you as far as expense. What what are, no, Dougie is taxed. He has water. Of the pond? Yeah. He yeah. does. Yeah. And we might. We don't know. I got a dock <laughs> that I just built last summer. I'm getting ready to <laughs> install on the pond. Oh. So, you know, I've had a dock there for 25 years, and oh. it's been gone for five years because of. You know, Why? Huh? Damage. It would be interesting to know what Grady and Sheila think of all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would imagine they're quite happy with the pond in their backyard because yeah. they've had it there for their whole yeah. lives. You know, I mean, their cows used yeah, to so drink out of it. Yeah. That's the fire that pond. surrounds most yeah. of the pond. Yeah, that's great. So I know that Liz has talked with them about whether they wanted to fix the dam, mm -hmm. and they said. No, nope. mm -hmm. it's a huge. It's, it would be a. If it goes, it goes. Mm -hmm. It would be an extraordinary it. cost. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary cost. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. well, that was one. Yeah. You mentioned that already. Your mm -hmm. spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of contingent things that are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liz. Water supplies. Liz was thinking too that the springs into the pond. Do you think there probably are? Yeah. yeah. Like, there there really must be old, some. But yeah. points in it when you're swimming. Yeah, there are two seep springs that have been mapped that are within the pond system that are mm -hmm. mapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't really know how all this whole thing works um, with our spring and whatever they decide, but like. Let's just say, worst case scenario, like, you know, they do whatever they do and our spring, that little gray box is affected. Like, are we then going to have to figure out, like, a new way to get our water or what? Like, how does that whole thing work? That would have to get figured out in the engineering. Well, okay, it's fine to say that now, but, like, what does that mean for us or the people who end up owning that house like you know what I mean that's why I'm so fired up about this it's because like 
Like, and, and it would be great if I'm just like, you know, the person who just doesn't get it. Like, then, then you could just explain it to me and, and I'll be fine. But like, just saying, I don't know. It doesn't make me feel but any better. We're not gonna we're not gonna wreck your water. Okay. Without, All right. without your permission. Which you'll never have a lot of so, okay. All right. The <laughs> option okay. there. This, this your spring is... should still exist regardless of whether there's a pond there or it, oh, it, it actually is, it goes the, it goes the other way. Okay. Those those what do you when mean? you when you when you deal with um, seep springs uh -huh. that, it, they're coming from up gradient. Oh, the pond okay. is below you. So the pond doesn't actually feed into that system at all. God. Actually, okay. it's all a right. it's a draw on the spring. Okay. So they, well, it's the opposite. Thank you. The, like so I said, I'm glad the pressure I'm the pressure gradient is coming from okay. higher up in the system. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Um, that, that wouldn't perfect. have that that. Okay. And if the pond did run into your spring, it probably wouldn't be. It wouldn't be water you wouldn't drink. Oh, okay, great. That's all I needed yeah. to hear. <laughs> Thank so, you. It will, it, so that, that part would not Okay. And if somehow, when they were doing the design, they were like, there's no way we can remove this dam without destroying Nikki's water, mm -hmm. then we, we can remove that. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. You have to think of some other Got solution. It. All right. Your water or the dam. <clears throat> okay, perfect. The, like I said, I am like, I didn't even take the 101 class on any of this, so, <laughs> yeah. Most people did not, no. Okay. Okay, so you said that the town uh, first step will be to figure out who would own the property and whether or not the state has enough money to pay her what she wants, and then there'll be an appraisal and a survey and figure out who owns what, and so how, how is that? Is that proceeding? Step by step, step or? Step by step. We haven't, we're on step one, which is asking you whether you want to own it. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh. We, have to make that we don't have to answer that now, do we? No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> no. But we should probably have all your neighbors come and convince that it's going to be kind of up to you guys Could have to hearing. convince this board. We'd have to have well, a we hearing. We should do that. Yeah, have a hearing. You'd have to yeah. have a hearing. Should have a hearing and, uh, like I said, I think if you actually want to go ahead with this, you'd probably have to present it to the town. Yeah. The town yeah. Meeting and we can do, so well, yeah. we can do it as a special hearing. We can um, just do a forum first and... And yeah. have a basic forum before that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The town might agree to anything. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Might not either. <laughs> yeah. I'll guarantee on that. Is that what you guys all want to see happen, or are you just kind of here for just to to hear the conversation? I have no idea, yeah. really. I just wanted to find out, get like my feet on the ground with the project, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> to know yeah. what's going on. So it's very mm -hmm. helpful. I really appreciate it. Thank you for putting it on your agenda. Um, it's really helpful, mm -hmm. and thank you for coming and explaining what's going on because yes. we really didn't know. <laughs> so, be the point person for I, I only heard from Liz that she saw it on Front Porch Forum yesterday. Oh, so <laughs> I'm here kind of by coincidence. Yeah, oh, right. you, yeah, we would have invited you if this was more than just a planning initial conversation. Initial conversation. Yeah. 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 So you'll be the point person for. Okay. I think the time thing is really important to people. The what? The time. Like, just cause, not, yeah. not finding out the day before, oh, like listening yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If you start doing that here, I yeah. don't think it'll go well. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I really feel like that's mm -hmm. that's what people. You know, people need time to yeah, consider. Yeah, they need time to. I mean, this is really it's part well, of our is, landscape. It's really is, part of our town. So, mm -hmm. and you they know, got a street named after it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can compensate for somebody's well, but you can't compensate for mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the whole what we have, the ambiance, the whole thing. And that's, mm -hmm. maybe that's just the way it is, but that seems sad to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And all that happened. So. All right. Okay, so Michelle. Yes. Your um, email? Uh, it's Michelle with one L at WinooskiRiver.org. Easy to find on the internet. Okay. Alright. Any other questions? 
So do you think we should, you guys think we should open this up for more conversation sooner rather than later? Like, well, I don't, I don't, you don't. I think it, it's probably better to get more information and then present that this is where we are and, you know, where, where those, I don't know where those points are going to be, but it, that seems to me a much, having another conversation like this, I'm not sure is, that well, with more people. Huh? I mean, it'll, it'll start have to start all over yeah. with the, with more That's people true. who might be interested. You know, Grady and Sheila. I think we have all the information that we need um, to consider the buyout. I mean, the other information that sounds like with the study, feasibility study, et cetera, that won't happen until yeah. we make a decision on the buyout. Oh, the buyout. It seems like we have yeah, all right. the information yeah. that we need to present to other people in town about whether about the town yeah. Yeah. would become the public mm -hmm. entity that would, mm -hmm. would you know. So the, I, I do have a question about the buyout too. Um, so I know you mentioned it being a huge liability, which oh, I yeah. totally the LCT, get. It's going yeah. um, to be a tremendous amount. But if part of the deal was that the dam was getting removed, then, you know, as, as a part of the whole process, would but then we wouldn't have a liability, right? Because the dam wouldn't be there. Yeah, no, it was. I think it would be good to bring the LC. I can't into speak for it. Right. I can't speak and for the find out what what mm -hmm. they what the liability would be right. for the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's obvious that we need to. Have even that. even without even without the dam structure, even if that was to be removed, there would yeah. be a significant liability. Mm -hmm. Okay. To the town as public space. And Public space is a wetland. And especially if it did maintain some water, because then, and it will, then, then even it without the dam structure there, it's it going to be different it's, too. It's going to be a fen. It's a natural fen that was dammed because it was a fen. So I mean, um, the chance of somebody um, drowning and then mm -hmm. somebody's going to get sued. Well, I don't yeah. think the town would own the milk pond unless that, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know what the, the lines are. We don't know what the distribution of, well, of of that would be. So the question these, are, these are really so, important things that we have to address. Survey, yeah. I don't think Liz is considered the owner of the mill pond. No, just your little property. Just the yeah. just the corner. And that's what the town would acquire. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So and to your question about what steps Dexter in terms of letting people know in the minutes that it'll how much of this will be reflected in the minutes? Not the discussion per se, but the HCTV has it all. <laughs> but the information, you know. The minute taker didn't show up tonight, so. Oh, uh, okay. But she will watch the video and, and do minutes. Yeah, do some minutes. Be passed on to Diana, which will, Diana will review and get. Print. Minutes will be printed. Yeah, I'm just thinking that if maybe. Yeah, if they're yeah. made public, but even it could be even a little bit more proactive to the landowners or something, to or maybe just even if it got sent to us and we could pass it to people to make sure they read it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can or that we might be helpful. Multiple copies at that town office. Yeah, that, that would be helpful, I think. But that and wouldn't then, happen until the next meeting, which yeah. was when we will approve the approve, approve the minutes right. from right. this meeting. So it's a month away. Yeah, but to but each, anybody can watch the uh, discussion on hctv.us. If you don't, if you have cable, if you don't have cable, you can look yeah, at it on website. your computer, hctv.us. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, no, I mean, if you have cable, it's like channel 1081 or something like that. 10, 10 something or yeah. cable. Yeah. <laughs> but we could, we could even pass that information to the neighbors so that they can watch it and see the discussion no more. Mm -hmm. I just think it's good because. I've talked to a couple of different neighbors who have kind of different stories, and so it'd be nice to have everybody have the same story, <laughs> you know, so we all are on yeah. the same page. So I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you for explaining the basics of how the water works. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I had to start out this way. That really wasn't the, the plan at all. I was just thinking it's we just learned about this and it was time to develop a plan to involve everybody else but now yeah. we're here so it's the phrase oh. no con really gets people's attention yes it yeah. does yeah. yeah well it, it definitely is a historical landmark um we to have an organization called friends of the mill pond before yeah. too long right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. although if you don't live in south woodburg you're probably don't know that much about yeah, it. If you don't go out Doug's driveway and start looking for it. Yeah. 
It is a little set back. Okay. All right. Um, without other comments, I think we should move along on our agenda. Okay. All right, I'm going to go. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, so on the agenda is the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department plan for their settling pond on town-owned lots and the fear um, response. Yeah, I just want wanted to update you a little bit on that, but it's, um, I contacted Stephanie Smith again, this is one that she was just talking about, Stephanie. yeah, asking whether the, um, Putting that little settling pond on our town property would be averse to the conditions that we have on the deed for the FEMA from FEMA, and she said, "Apologies," she said, "FEMA would take issue with that if it was on the buyout property." So I we talked brief. I didn't really <coughs> talk to her yet, but I do think we could possibly tie this in with the property line issue. Um, that we have there. Thank you. Thank you. And possibly, I just made this, possibly, um, this is the, let's see, this is the, uh, here's the power pole, I think. Here's where the fire department surveyor put a property line. He measured, he put it way up here. In the 1857 deed, it says that that corner of the property is six feet from the bridge. So, so no you know, bridge. who knows where there's the bridge, no bridge was yeah. or where the stream was. I mean, the stream wasn't even built up with granite blocks like it is now no, because the cow, one of the things in the deed was that the cows could still drink from the stream. So our, our surveyor put the... Took, a midpoint there, but their surveyor, Richard Bell, decided to, way over here next to the stream. So... What's the scale of this? Oh god, I don't know. So it's a pretty crappy map. Well, I don't have the whole thing. I mean, I have just the part that... that Without a scale, it's impossible to make any judgment on. Yeah, well the anyways, the, the, the idea was if we could use this as an ex as a way to straighten out, because the way they have it, we wouldn't have any access to this part of our property, it's the part beyond have, the tree. It's well, not that we don't have access to it. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't become inaccessible. Well, if they wanted to put up a fence, they could. I don't expect they would, and they said they wouldn't. But that's the point. Is that uh, that we're looking for the worst possible expectations. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean. We're, I was going to sort of let it go because Paul said there's no way they're going to cut that off. But this, if we could do this, clear up the property line issue and give them their little place for a pond over here, that might be a, a good solution. Like Paul's, nice. Paul's response to that was he didn't want to spend any more money. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> Isn't it that if the fire department goes belly up, it reverts to the town's property anyway? Yes, oh, does. yeah. So, we, well... That's what they have in their bylaws, but I don't know if the town has ever agreed to that. Or that's in the so fire department. That's in the fire department bylaws. Yeah. Isn't that in the MOU? I don't think it's in the MOU. They have what they call their bylaws, and there is a clause in there that if the fire department goes belly up, that all of their assets revert to the town, mm -hmm. the buildings anyway. Right. So, anyways, I just wanted to mention that as a possibility. If the town wanted to, I, I haven't told FEMA that there is that issue, that that property line is still in flux. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really think they would care, and if they did care, I didn't want to, you know, our I'd surveyor. Like know, I'd like to know exactly what the distance is between that disparate property line. Okay, no. So maybe I can you come and look that. at the actual yep. map. By having a sediment, uh, by having that water storage is that going to affect the state for replacing that culvert that goes under the wall under the road under that it what? really needs to re it needs be replaced, to be replaced since it's falling in yeah. by having a water retention on that property oh it would be way back i don't really yeah, think don't but think it's it still if, if up above beaver dams it's just a little like tiny oh 
Uh, it's similar to that the little retention pond uh, that's in the, in the park here. on the other side of the stream oh. you know, with the stone, that kind of stone yeah. bowl. It's it would tiny. be something similar yeah. to that. It's really small. Yeah. yeah. It's really fun. We've it's been waiting for. Yeah, I don't know if that culvert replaced. And the box yeah. culvert, yeah, I don't know if that's even on their radar anymore. Well, it used to be when we were part of District 7, it was on their radar. Yeah. Right. I still have no idea. Yeah. It still yeah. is. It still is? Yeah. Okay. I can follow through with it more. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I haven't advocated for it. So, so anyways, that was just, just why I put it on there. Still. Notice the blocks that caved in on. Both sides. Yeah, yeah, that's not the culvert mm -hmm. though. That's that's the. But still, a new construction of a culvert would take care of that. Right. You think? Yes. Yeah. You could yeah. hope so. Have to. You yeah. would hope and so. And actually, but, District Seven did say they would fix that. Mm. Um, and then District Six is aware that they could fix mm. it. That they had been promised mm. to be fixed. Have but a, yeah. No mm. one's fixed it yet. It's just. Yeah, it's mm. not. So. It's not high their priority. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. Okay, is there anything that we skipped over here? That there was something about the local emergency plan. That's oh, yeah. one reason I'm hanging out here. Right, till thank you. Around. I'm waiting for you to come back. No. <laughs> so, um, so I can give you a history of that, and I have the 2021 uh, copy. Oh, I wondered about that. I could send that to you as an out. email. Um, so Do you have a copy of that? Um, I have a paper copy here. No, I mean, I was asking you, you guys get, did you get to print that out? Yeah, you should, somewhere Chris may have that in his, I think I have that in email in, files yeah. or in, in, in town files. Um, so, um, what's really needed, um, we don't have an emergency management director, but the number of last few years, um, chance Payette as our emergency management director and also a member of the fire department and myself as a select board member have done this form. Mm -hmm. um, and we really, there hasn't been much to do on it new. Um, it lists who different principal people involved um, and those names change um, and some of them do need to be updated. Um, and then it has, there's a listing of equipment. It's mostly fire department equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and the, like the school is our emergency shelter. So it has the, you know, uh, the listing of the principal. Um, and Larry's name is on there as the mate, former maintenance person in 2021. So um, it wouldn't take much to do this, but it, um, to redo it, um, we would just have to come up with some new names. Um, obviously, I'm not a select board member anymore, and Chance is not the emergency management director. Mm -hmm. and as far as I know, we don't have, have one at the moment. Yeah, it falls to the chair of the select board. Yeah. And Paul, yeah, um, I think that's why I was a part of it, because I was mm -hmm. the chair. Um, Paul Cerruti is listed. He's the fire chief. and, and uh, and you know, the, it's basically our fire department is our emergency management team, agency, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so, um, Michael, if you would send that to me, I'll, I'll sure. Share. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, it would be, I, I would love to see somebody from the fire department become the emergency mm -hmm. management director. Mm -hmm. It just makes the most sense because yeah. they, they have the training and when we do have an emergency in town they, they're the ones that take care yeah. of it so yeah so i'll send this a copy of this is the 2021 it's the one that i have but i wouldn't mind a digital copy okay from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's probably buried somewhere i'm sure it's coming in <laughs> so i would appreciate okay. a fresh digital yeah. copy i can work on it yeah thank you Mike. so you know Paul Cerruti might be willing to be I'll the other, to Paul other person. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There are a couple of people I can ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is that list of names. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we go quietly. Vicky.
of other agenda items, I do not have any others that we need to return to. Michael, would you shut that door, please? Oh, sorry. Thank you. There's still mosquitoes. Yeah, you don't want mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes. I would like to make a motion that we move into an executive session. I'll second that. Talk about a couple things. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.